Hi everyone, my name is Hussain and in this video we are going to talk about the ambassador pattern. Let's assume that our system is built on a microservices architecture and it's hosted in containers. And one of our microservices, let's say microservice A, wants to initiate a remote service call to a remote service A. So it's going to be as easy and simple as sending a request to the remote service and receiving a response back. And this is just the first step that we can implement, sending a request, receive a response. And there are other things that we need to consider and keep in mind while we implement this kind of a remote service calls. One of them is the retry mechanism. Let's assume a scenario that a remote service A has responded with a kind of error that tells you, try again later. And if you forwarded that error to the user, the user is simply going to click the button one more time or sending the same request with the same input parameters again, hoping that remote service A will be able to process his request. So these are the kind of situations when you should consider implementing a retry mechanism to make the user experience better for the user and to make your microservices implementation solid. And the perfect example I hope it's going to make the retry mechanism clearer for you is the database deadlock. Let's assume that you are trying to do a database operation, whether it's read or write, and you have received a database deadlock. And what the deadlock tells you that your process has got blocked because the database engine was busy executing other operations. And if you try to send your request or your query one more time, while the database engine is free, it should be able to get through and get executed. And here is the interesting part that's going to show you how to use retry mechanism in the database deadlock scenario. And what you need to do is to catch a specific exception, the database deadlock exception. And within the exception handling, you send your request one more time to the database. You are hoping that other operations that had blocked your process are now executed and the database engine is free to process your request. This is what retry mechanism is about. There are certain kind of errors that we cannot do anything about them, but try one more time. And this is what trying to handle here internally. Instead of sending the database deadlock exception to the user, and the user will just have to click on the button one more time, hoping that their request is going to get executed. Now let's talk about circuit breaking. And you can consider use circuit breaking pattern for a long term failures that takes around 10, 20 minutes or more, while retry is for the short term failures. In a distributed environment, it's very likely that we can have any kind of errors, network failure, or the remote service A is totally down. At that point, it's going to be pointless for microservice A to keep sense requests to the remote service, although it knows that it's already unavailable. It's not only that, sooner or later microservice A might be run out of resources because all of its resources has been allocated to try to initiate a remote service call for a service that's not available. So this, there is a risk for our microservice A to be unavailable as well. This is when circuit breaking pattern becomes really helpful. Circuit breaking pattern is going to stop microservice A from sending any requests to the remote service A as long as it's down. And once remote service A is back online again, microservice A should be able to send requests to the remote service A. And hopefully we are going to make a video in the future to cover circuit breaking pattern. Moving to the monitoring, and we should implement logging and monitoring for our microservice A to see what are the requests we are sending to the remote service and what are the responses we are receiving from them. Finally, we have security, including all security headers, encryption, SSL that needs to be implemented to secure the way microservice A communicates with the remote service A. So these are the different features we need to keep in mind when we create a remote service call and let's assume we have implemented all of these features directly into microservice A. And in the microservices architecture, it's very common that you are going to have hundreds or even thousands of services in your system. And it's very likely that you are going to have more than one microservice that wants to call a remote service to get some results or to do a certain action. 
And we have already figured out things or features that we need to implement while we call a remote service through our implementation for microservice A. So it should be easy and straightforward for us to repeat the same logic over and over for microservice B and microservice C. And at this stage, all of our microservices in our system that requires to call a remote service will be compliant with the best practice. And here is the problem. We have gone against the dry principle, don't repeat yourself. By repeating the same logic over and over for every microservice in our system, we have gone against that principle. And also, imagine a situation if we want to add a new security header, for example. You will have to do so for every microservice in our system. And what's more, you will have to do a deployment for every microservice got affected. So for such a tiny change, just adding a new security header, it requires you to do a massive amount of development work across multiple services and to do massive deployments for different microservices in your system. And this is the challenge that the ambassador pattern is trying to solve. By pulling out all of these common features from the different microservices we have in our system and put them in a separate container, let's call it ambassador. Now, when microservice A wants to make a call, it's going to send the request to the ambassador container which is going to forward it to the right destination and then receiving the response back and send it through to the microservice A. So now we have kind of solved the duplication issue and now we are compliant with the dry principle since we have removed all of the duplication we used to have in our microservices and just put them in one container called the ambassador. But we have created another problem if you may have noticed. Now, we have a single point of failure, because if the ambassador container is down, all of our microservices will lose their ability to connect to any remote service. And we can resolve this by initiating multiple ambassador containers, and make each of them dedicated for one of our microservices. So in this case, if ambassador A went down, it will only affect the microservice A ability to connect to remote services. Other ambassador containers will not be affected. Other microservices in our system will still be able to send requests to other remote services. And this is what ambassador pattern is about. Now let's talk about some considerations for the ambassador pattern. First of all, you should expect some latency to the overall remote service call because you are adding a new layer in front of your microservices. However, you should aim to make that latency as minimum as possible. Moving to the nature of the operations and how it might affect the retry mechanism, you need to make sure that your operations are idempotent. Idempotent operation means it's an operation that can safely execute it more than once without making any harm or causing any data corruption. And this is something you should keep in mind when you apply your retry mechanism for different operations. You need to ask yourself, are those operations idempotent or not? Also, you need to give your clients or microservices an ability to pass some inputs or context to your ambassador container. For example, you should allow your microservices or clients to pass on number of retries that they would prefer for a certain operation. Maybe some microservices would prefer three or seven or five retries, while other clients may tolerate zero retries at all. You should allow your microservices to make that decision. Last consideration here is the style of the deployment. Whether you wanna have one ambassador container shared across your microservices in your system, or you want to have separate ambassador containers and each of them is dedicated to one microservice in your architecture. Both are available for you. So when we should be using the ambassador pattern, when you have multiple microservices, different languages, frameworks, or different systems, and you want to apply a common set of connectivity features across all of them, this is the best use case for the ambassador pattern. Also, when you have multiple development teams and you want to have one team focus on the key features of your microservice and other team focus on the infrastructure connectivity aspect of things. Also, this is going to be very useful for you to use the ambassador pattern. Finally, if you have a legacy application that you cannot change easily and quickly, 
What you can do instead, you put an ambassador container in front of it and the ambassador container is going to handle all the connectivity features you want to apply. Now let's talk about when you should not use the ambassador pattern. As we mentioned before, you should expect some network latency by using the ambassador pattern. And if the network performance is critical for you, you should not use the ambassador pattern. Also, if all of your microservices are built using a single language, it's going to be even better if you build a client library and distribute it to different teams and microservices. This is going to be more efficient than building an ambassador container. And finally, when your connectivity features cannot be common across your microservices and they are very different, then you should not use the ambassador pattern. Now we are coming to the end of this video. I hope now it's clear for you what the ambassador pattern is about, what the challenges it tries to solve, and when to use it and when not to use it as well. Thanks for watching.